No matter where you go in the sprawling San Fernando Valley, you're never very far from the massive freeway system that each and every day transports hundreds of thousands of commuters. Before World War II, that was a job that was done by the old red car rail line. In fact, in those days, Los Angeles had the largest interurban rail system in the world. Well, then along came the 50s, and the automobile, and the freeways, and it ended all of that. And now, today, as we approach the 21st century, rail transportation is suddenly new again. Not only that, it is a major ingredient in a massive plan that it is hoped by the year 2000 is going to help to solve what is fast becoming the commuter's nightmare. Pat McLaughlin is the San Fernando Valley Area Team Director for the Los Angeles County Transportation Commission. Well, as you know, the valley is facing near gridlock by the end of this century. Right now we have average freeway speeds of about 24 miles an hour in the valley during the peak period. It's some of the worst congestion in Los Angeles County. And it's predicted that if we don't do something about traffic in the valley, that the average freeway speed will go down to seven miles an hour in the Ventura Freeway corridor by the year 2000. After years of debate, two competing rail alternatives emerged for the valley. The first would be an elevated aerial system, a monorail perhaps, following the route of the Ventura Freeway. The second would be a subway and above ground train system using existing rail right of way along Chandler Boulevard. They'll be followed up with letters and calls. Yeah, we'll have to follow these up. Richard Wirth is co chairman of the Citizens Committee for Monorail. Monorail runs will run between 40 and 60 million dollars a mile, and at the present time we're spending over 300 million dollars a mile on a metro rail system. So cost is a, a primary factor, particularly in this type of an economy. Secondly, environmentally speaking, monorail has been proven time and time again to be the most environmentally sensitive type of system. It is virtually noiseless. Uh, the example of that is, is that the monorail system runs through the Disney Hotel and Disney World in Orlando approximately 20 hours a day, and there are people sleeping above and below the monorail and are never disturbed. Rosalind Wayman is a deputy to city council member Marvin Browdy. What is it about the subway system, in, in your mind, that outweighs the extra $600 million cost as opposed to what the aerial system would cost? It's a visionary, futuristic issue for me. I don't want to build for today. I want to build for the future. I want to make sure that what we have is compatible with what's coming in from Hollywood so that when you get to the North Hollywood station or at Universal you aren't getting off one train going up another flight going across getting up going on it's been shown if you can create less transfers and make it easier for people to ride the rail you're gonna get a higher ridership for many Valley residents rail ridership is only half of the equation what about the effects on the neighborhoods those rail riders pass through Don Schultz is president of the the Van Nuys Homeowners Association. He opposes the Burbank Chandler line. The route itself is going to go through too many residential neighborhoods and divide residential neighborhoods. The voters in the San Fernando Valley did an advisory vote on what line they preferred as far as uh, transit in the San Fernando Valley. Nearly 50 percent of the people that voted voted for monorail on the Ventura Freeway. This line, Burbank Chandler, got the third out of the fourth, and the, la the last selection was no rail at all. So you can see that <laughs> if you look at money, if you look at the choice of the people who voted for it, and if you look at the most obvious, what's going to move the most cars and where it is the most visible, Ventura Freeway has to be the most obvious. Those who favor the Burbank Chandler route say that plans to create a subway through more heavily residential areas will limit community disruption, and they have their own economic and environmental criticisms of an aerial system. Polly Ward is vice president of the Studio City Residents Association. You know, there are a lot of people in the valley who voted on a referendum that they would like to see that monorail in the valley. I don't think they understood, because when people are told how high that is going to be and how visually impacting it's going to be, they, they suddenly sober up about, you know, whether this would be good or not. I think that there are savings in continuing the metro rail in terms of you're using the same cars, you're using the same operators, you're using the same technology, you are using the same uh, maintenance crew. 
And I think if, if it were really costed out, which can't be done because no one knows, that the continuation of Metrorail would be cheaper than the monorail. And a lot of people agree with me on that. The ultimate question is, which transit alternative will best serve Valley residents? Universal City North Hollywood Chamber of Commerce Executive Vice President Don Eichner. We still have no central mass transit project through the heart of the San Fernando Valley and, and no room to develop um, what can be a positive growth capacity. What happens is you're immediately restricted on the Ventura Freeway with Ventura Boulevard. They have a specific plan. They have absolute limits on what they can do. Well, if you have limits on what you can do, how are you going to, you know, where do you grow to and how do you develop plans that are positive and balance the needs of the community? It's, it's, it's strangled, you know, from the, from the get-go. After years of study, planning, and debate, in a short time, the Los Angeles County Transportation Commission will make its final decision for the Valley's transit future. And whether it's an aerial system over the Ventura Freeway or a subway rail system along the Burbank-Chandler route, many see the coming of a better day for mass transit in the valley. We see that as a tremendous day for the commuter in the valley because we have a whole system that's a set of building blocks that's all designed to work together. It's called our metro system. We'll be opening commuter rail in October of 1992, which will provide for those long distance trips to downtown. We'll be redesigning the bus system with SCRTD in the next year or two to provide feeder service to these rail systems and to make sure that people can get from their homes to activity centers without transferring too often. We'll be improving the service for the elderly and disabled. We'll have a series of high occupancy vehicle lanes on the 118 freeway, the 5 freeway, the 170, and the 405 that'll all work together to get carpoolers van poolers and bus poolers back and forth in the future. Uh, no residential representative or homeowner group wants to see any of their neighborhood adversely affected by anything, any sort of improvement. Uh, if it's something that's going to be for the betterment of the city and will really improve transportation in the city, then we're all going to have to give to some degree. But what we have to do is kind of find out which technology is the best and will serve the most people. I would rather see us coming closer together and and developing positive growth plans that make good sense, uh, I think it's irresponsible to not recognize that 400,000 new births will occur in San Fernando Valley between now and 2010. It's almost immoral to say, well, let's not plan for it. I am not one of those people that are an all or nothing. I mean, we have lots of options. We have buses, we have taxi cabs, we have automobiles, we have rail. There are lots of ways to get around our city. And the rail, for me, is the future and I would imagine 20, 30 years down the road, that we're not gonna have as many automobiles on the road because we're gonna have connections and interlinkings, and it's just gonna make a lot of sense. I think the transit can be the catalyst to the future and the development of the city of Los Angeles. It is not going to be one system, and this is my own opinion and my estimation, it's going to be a system that is made up of various components that may be different to move people around, to do business. Without the transportation systems and the improvements to the transportation systems, economically, we are going to suffer. Somebody got me out of my car 15 years ago. Uh, it happened because it was convenient. And if it's convenient and it's clean and it's fast and it's safe, people will get out of their cars. When they realize how much money they are saving, that will be a strong incentive.